we got to be proud enough to say that we can do it, but we can do it better together. Kaya muli, paalala ko sa bawat isa, manatili tayo maging magini sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa sa ating pang-araw-araw na buhay para sa ating kapwa at sa nag-iisang bayan natin. It may take a while before we can fully recover from the effects of the pandemic. But as shown by LCF's 25 years of CSR excellence, we can always look forward to a better and brighter future together. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to meet together. Please help us to come together to make this institution reflect your kingdom. Breathe life into our ideas and decisions. Help us build a team that has love and respect at its heart. Give us the strength to continue working for your kingdom in this time of pandemic. Lord, come give us the inspiration to be the best we can be. May we be a shining example of your goodness and truth within, wherever we are. Inspire our thoughts, discussions, and ideas, and continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth for the greater glory of you. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Oh, my God.
Marami na akong papel na ginampanan. Marami na akong papel na hinawakan. Pero parating na ang pinaka-importanteng papel na gagampanan ko. Ako ay gaganap na. Taong Bayan 1. Taong Bayan 23. Taong Bayan 456. Taong Bayan 111, 213. Taong Bayan 141,500. Taong Bayan 17,181,920. Taong Bayan 25,262,720. Taong Bayan 40 million. We are 40 million strong. Ang dami pala natin, no? Apat na pong milyong kabataan ang maaring maging botan. Apat na pong milyong kabataan ang may kakayahang kumilos. At baguhin ang kasaysayan. Makapangyarihan ang papel na ito. Mahalaga ang papel na ito. Tatanggapin mo ba ang hamon? O hahayaan mo na lang masayang ang papel mo? Ang boto ko ay para sa mga mahal ko sa buhay. Mga OFWs. Frontliners. Kabataan. Mga dating kabataan. Kababaihan. Kalalakihan. Mga kapatid na LGBTQIA+. Mga katutubo. Mga magsasaka at manggagawa. Mga maralita. Mga pinatahimik at walang bose sa lipunan. Gagampanan ko ang papel na ito dahil pangarap ko ang isang bayang may masaganang agrikultura. Isang bayang ang mga mamamayan ay hindi na kailangang malayo sa mga mahal sa buhay. Para magkaroon ng oportunidad at makaahon sa kahirapan. I dream of a nation where education is a right and not a privilege. At lahat ng kabataan makapagtatapos ng pag-aaral nang hindi nangangamba. Dahil sinusuportahan siya ng kanyang bayan na magtagumpay sa buhay na kanyang pinapangarap. Where health is a right and not a privilege. Kayang harapin ang pandemya o kahit anumang disaster ng may kahandaan. Isang bayang kinikilala na ang malusog na isip ng mamamayan ay mahalaga sa pagpapaunlad ng mga pamayanan. May paggalang sa kalikasan. A nation where all genders, all genders, are respected. Where I see my taxes prioritize education. Public health care and housing at lahat may access. Lahat may access. Lahat may access. At sapat na sahod. Where arts and artists' contributions are recognized and supported because we are essential too. We are essential too. At ang mga pangako ay hindi nagiging buhangin. Hindi nagiging buhangin. Where I can speak up and be heard. Not antagonized. Isang bansang hindi kailangan matakot ng taong bayang magpahayag ng katotohanan. Where leaders value, serve, and protect its people. Not kill them. Not kill them. Walang diskriminasyon. Walang karahasan. Where we are not misled by fake news and misinformation. Where truth prevails. Isang bayang kinikilala ang kanyang sariling identidad. Malaya sa hawak ng mga dayuhang bansa. A nation where trapos are cancelled. Trapos cancel? No. Trapos cancelled. Where our government officials are not mere politicians, but servant leaders. Mga leader na tapak, papas, makatao, makabayan. Where leaders push for the quality of life that every Filipino truly deserves. Iisa lang naman talaga ang layunin natin. We all want a better place to live in. Gusto rin namang mas maayong lugar na kapulian. Magpati kita nga may kabaskog ang aton tingog. Kailangan nang maniwala tayo na may bisa ang ating tinig. Sa dami natin, tingin mo wala tayong power? Maging matalino, maging mapanuri. Boboto tayo dahil mas marami tayo. May pag-asa pa. Mahalaga ang papel natin. Dahil tayo ang magmamana ng bayang ito.
Magandang umaga, may imbag na adlaw. Maayong puntag sa tanan. Good morning. Ako si Gertrude Farenas, or Gerti for short, mula sa Youth Leadership or Democracy or Youth Lead, ang inyong host for this webinar. Thank, thank you for taking time to attend this webinar series as we gear up for the May 9, 2022 elections, 88 days from today. E ano nga ba ang papel natin sa halalan tulad ng napanood natin sa video? Bakit mahalagang malaman na hashtag 40 million strong tayong mga kabataan? Bakit mahalaga na may hugot o dahilan kung bakit tayo boboto? Ang sagot sa mga tanong na ito at iba pang kaalaman tungkol sa kahalagahan ng ating pakilahok sa halalan, sama-sama nating aalamin sa ating webinar ngayong umaga. Also, let's encourage our friends to join us in our webinar to reach more youth members and share the knowledge that we will be learning today. So. Let's start. So to start our interactive session, please complete the statement. I am the name from name of LCF member company. And this 2022 elections, I will then. Again, please complete the statement. You may type the same in our Zoom chat. I am, well, I'll state your name, from uh, the name of the LCF member company. And this 2022 elections, I will plan. And so nakalagay na po sa ating uh, Zoom chat ngayon yung um, susundin po nating format para sa ating introduction today. Ayan, so while you are typing your respective statement or introduction, please be reminded of the following house rules during the conduct of our webinar for today. So house rules, make sure to follow the naming convention through org underscore name. For example, if you're part of LCF, then put LCF underscore Juan de la Cruz. And then send your messages through chat and questions through the panelists. And then stay seated and stay present and share your learnings, realization, and experiences in the session through your social media and use the hashtags Hashtag Kabila Kasa 2022 and hashtag LCF, our CSR League of Choice. Ayan, so good morning. I um, Good morning from Eleanor Lansang. I am Lane Lansang from SM Foundation and this 2022 elections, I will vote wisely. Ayan, so keep, uh, keep sending your introductions. And, okay. Ayan, so th since this is an interactive session, we prepared a short quiz for you and you have to choose the best answer from the choices. Remember, only the best answer. Kasi marami correct choices, but you have, but we only have one best answer. Looks like we're having some technical difficulties right now, but let's. Ayan. Ayan, sige, magbabasa pa tayo ng um, introductions. Oh, yan, meron na tayong questions. Ayan, so magpa-flash po sa screen ng ating mga questions and you have to answer lang po. Ayan. Ayon sa 1987 Constitution Article 2, Section 1, ang Pilipinas ay isang democratic at rep and republican state. Ano ang ibig sabihin nito? A, ang gobyan. Ayan, sige, let's wait for other people to participate. No? A, ang gobyerno ang makapangyarihan kaysa sa tao. B, ang namumuno sa gobyerno ay ang may kapangyarihan kaysa sa mga tao. C, ang mga tao ang siyang may kapangyarihan at ang tao ang nagtatalaga ng mga mamumuno sa gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng malayang eleksyon. Or D, ang gobyerno ang may kapangyarihan na mag-organisa ng eleksyon upang makaboto ang mga tao. And so, habang naghihintay tayo magsagot yung iba, no, magbasa pa tayo. So, from so from Danielle Jude, 
I am Raniel from RD Foundation, and this 2022 elections, I will enjoy my right to suffrage. Okay, sige. So, five, four, three, two, one. Ayan. So ang ma ang marami pong mga nagsagot ay ang mga ang mga tao ay siyang may kapangyarihan at ang tao ang nagtatalaga ng mga mamumuno sa gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng malayang election at yun ang tamang sagot. So lahat ng mga sumagot, ayan, tama ang inyong sagot. Ayan. So, next question. Uh, ayan. So, next question. Ano ang tinatawag na right of suffrage? A. Karapatan na magrehistro. B. Karapatan na makaboto. C. Karapatan na makilahok sa pamimili ng mga mabuno sa gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng eleksyon. Or D. Karapatan na pumili ng kandidato. Ayan. So, 5, 4, 3, 2. Ayan. Nalilo itong mga tao. 1. Okay. Ayan. So, may mga sumagot ng letter B, karapatan na makaboto. Pero naman, letter C, karapatan na makilahok sa pamimili ng mga mamumuno sa gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng eleksyon. And letter D, meron din, uh, karapatan na pumili ng kandidato. So, ang correct answer po ay letter C, karapatan na makilahok sa pamimili ng mga mamumuno sa gobyerno sa pamamagitan ng eleksyon. Ayan. So, sana may matutunan tayo today na bago, no? Ayan. Tuwing kailan ginaganap ang eleksyon? A. Ikalawang lunes ng Mayo kada tatlong taon. B. Ikatlong lunes ng Mayo kada anim na taon. C. Ikalawang lunes ng Mayo kada dalawang taon. O D. Wala sa nabanggit. Okay, so, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so, ayan. So, may mga nagsagot ng letter A, letter B, at letter D. So, ang correct answer po ay sa ikalawang lunes ng Mayo kada tatlong taon. Kada tatlong taon, tama. Ayan, question number four. Sino-sino ang mga opisyal na inihahalat tuwing ikatlong taon? Ayan, so letter A, Vice President, Senators, and House of Representatives. B, Senators, House of Representatives, Governors, Vice Governors, Bokal, Mayor, uh, Mayors, Vice Mayors, Counselors, Barangay Captains, Barangay Kagawads, at Sangguning Ang Kabataan. C. House of Representatives, Mayors, Vice Mayors, Counselors, Barangay Captains, Barangay Kagawas at Sangguni Ang Kabataan. Or D. Governors, Vice Governors, bo uh, Bokal, um, Mayors, Vice Mayors, Counselors, Barangay Captains, Barangay Kagawas at Sangguni Ang Kabataan. Ayan. So, forget lang tayo. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. So, marami sa mga sumagot ngayon ng letter B. So, that is the correct answer. Letter B. Senators, House of Representatives, Governors, Vice Governors, Pokal, uh, Mayors, Vice Mayors, Counselors, um, Barangay Captains, Barangay Kagawas, at Sangguni Ang Kabataan. Ayan. Question number five. Ilan ang bumubuo ng Commission on, El Co Commission on Election and Bank? So, A, 7, isang chairperson at anim na commissioners na may 7-year fixed term. B, isang chairperson at limang commissioner. C, isang chairperson at apat na commissioner na may 7-year fixed term. Or D, uh, isang chairperson at um, three commissioners na may 7-year fixed term. Ayan, so sagot-sagot lang po tayo. Okay, so, five, four, three, two, one. Ayan, okay, sige. 
So may mga sumagot ng letter A, letter C, and letter D. Ang correct answer po ay letter A. Um, seven ang bumubuo ng commission on election. May, uh, may isang chairperson at anin na commissioners na may seven-year fixed term. Ayan, question number six. Sino-sino ang mga opisyal na inihahala tuwing ikatlong taon? A. Magpunta sa local cop uh, Magpunta sa local comelec at i-check ang record. Ay, okay, so na skip. Okay, so para payagang makaboto, ikaw ay dapat na A. 18 years old pa taas sa May 9, 2022. B. Nakatira sa inyong barangay ng mahigit na anim na buwan bago magparehistro. C. By voters ID or D. Nasa computerized list or CVL ang pangalan. Sige, ayan. So, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ayan, okay. So, maraming mga nagsagot ng letter D. Okay, so may mga nagsagot ng letter A, letter C, but ang tamang sagot po ay letter D. Nasa computerized voters list ang pangalan. Ayan. Ayan, no? So, na-review na po, na po ba tayo sa ating constitution subject at current events? Marami pa tayong mga election trivia at pa-quiz. Kaya sulitan natin ang pakikinig sa ating resource person mamaya. Bilang pagpapatuloy, let us now hear the welcome remarks and messages from our organizers. Join me in welcoming the Executive Director of Ronald McDonald House Charities and LCF Secretary, Ms. Maricar Angeles. Let us give her a warm virtual applause. Good morning. So to all the members of the League of Corporate Foundations who are with us today, to our partner, the Youth Leadership for Democracy or Youth Led PH, the Chief of Party, Ms. Ching Jorge, and to all the participants, let me greet you of a youthful and an empowering morning. It is not every day that you are given the chance to speak before the youth, who is as a passionate, critical, and skillful generation. Today, in the first of the three sessions of the Youth Voters Education Series, we are grateful for your interest and participation on this very timely activity to cultivate more of your love for our country. I am certain that our partner, Youth Lad PH, is also excited to join you all as we put our guards up to fight, not just for our lives, but for the lives of the future generations. Maybe some of you are one of the 4 million new, newly registered youth voters. Meron po ba dyan? Well, then you have made the right choice of practicing your right to suffrage. Understanding the power of vote, defining the roles of election stakeholders, and learning the process on how to vote are vital and crucial points as we gear towards the coming elections. We hope that as you partake in these three sessions, especially designed for you, the young professionals, you'll be reminded of the power that the youth holds, of the power that each of you holds. One vote is always greater than having no vote at all. Remember, as the youth, you comprise 52% of the voting population. You are more than the whole election force. And just as how huge your population is, that's also how huge your influence can be. You are the game changers, the stumbling block, the tiebreakers. You can make the difference. I guess there's no other correct formula on how to vote, but to educate yourself first on who really is the servant leader to be a public servant. Know these candidates, read over their credentials, do a fact check. Look at your privilege. Remember the farmers, the senior citizens, the frontliners, the fisher folks. Remember women, children, LGBTQIA+, the OFWs, persons deprived of liberty, the indigenous people communities. You are the beacon of light, their voice, their hand, and their hope. We don't want to suffer for another six years in the wrong hands. Let us set an example to be wiser and bolder this time. Because what? As you always say, we deserve, period. 
So may this session transcend to ignite your passion to educate, influence, and select the most deserving leaders we need. See you all in the whole duration of the series. I know you'll have a great and meaningful time. Salamat sa pantanggap ng hamon. Maraming salamat po sa Youthland PH at sa LCF Committee in Education. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at magandang umaga po. Thank you so much, Ms. Angeles. We will now hear from LCF's partner in this webinar, our Chief of Party from Youthled. Please help me welcome by giving virtual heart icons to Ms. Natalie Christine Jorge. Thank you. To our young professionals from LCF member companies present here this morning, LCF board member Marie Angeles from the Ronald McDonald House Charities Foundation, LCF board member Reg Handal from the Manila Water Foundation, and Louis de Real from the Security Bank Foundation and chair of the LCF Committee on Education. To all our youth-led and LCF team members here this morning, good morning. We would like to welcome you to our Youth Voters Education Series. We are proud of this partnership and the collaboration with the private sector that prioritizes the youth and democracy and nation building. We would also like to thank LCF's Education Committee for taking the lead in organizing this series. Youth-led is a program that provides leadership training, capacity building, civic and voters education to Filipino youth nationwide. Our goal is to strengthen and increase civic action and political participation among the youth and aid in developing a deeper understanding of governance and, dem and democracy and why it is important for the youth to let their collective voices be heard. We believe in the youth and your capacity to innovate, participate, and collaborate towards addressing local and national issues and concerns. As young professionals, you have the opportunity to lead youth engagement efforts in the private sector and make your voices heard. You have the capacity to fight disinformation and be instruments of truth, fairness, and accountability among your peers and communities. Your participation and presence in this series can equip you with more information on the electoral process, how you can exercise your rights in political and electoral participation. It will help you learn more about the political system, the positions you are voting for, and the importance of democratic participation. With majority of registered voters coming from the youth sector, the capacity to elect the next president is in the hands of the youth. Your choice of leaders will shape our country's future. We strongly believe in your capacity to, to uphold democracy, elect the right leaders, and use your voices to enlighten minds and make positive change happen for the country. Thank you again for your presence here this morning. Thank you to the youth-led team, and thank you again, LCF, for this meaningful and fruitful partnership. Thank you, Ms. Ching, for that very inspiring message. Ngayon naman po ay pakinggan natin si Mr. Reginald Randall, Executive Director ng Manila Water Foundation at LCF Vice Chairperson. Good morning, our young Filipino voters. Let me say first, thank you to each and every one of you. You have responded to the call to participate in our sessions. Whatever your reason is in attending, I encourage that you make the most out of your time today. Why? Because it is no exaggeration to say that Filipino youth could decide the winners of the 2022 national and local elections. You are one of the registered voters from the youth sector that comprised 40 million of our electorates this year. Hence, we have a key role to play in deciding who gets to lead our country and our community in the next six years. We all believe who, that you, that can make huge and lasting impact to this great nation. It is in this reason why the League of Corporate Foundations, or LCF, being at the forefront of promoting and enhancing corporate social responsibility took upon itself to provide a platform to inform and empower young individuals to become better nation builders. This initiative stemmed from the desire to educate and engage our youth, students, and even young professionals as we shape our country's progress and future through the forthcoming 2022 national and local elections. With the meeting of the minds and sharing of the hearts, our program was brought to life by the CSR pillars and LCF leaders, such as Mario De Requito of BDO Foundation, Chito Sobrepeña of Metrobank Foundation, who is here with us today, 
Ruel Maranan of Ayala Foundation, Maribeth Marasigan of Aboitis Foundation, and Lilibeth Aristorenas of Unilab Foundation. With the support of the LCF Board of Trustees headed by its chair, Baste Quinones of Filipina Shell Foundation and the efforts of LCF Education Committee led by its chair, Louis de Real of Security Bank Foundation, we are conducting the Youth Voters Education Series. We are also happy that we have the authority and increasing civic engagement and strengthening governance participation to facilitate our session. The Youth Leadership for Democracy or Youth-Led PH. Let us extend our heartfelt gratitude to its Chief of Party, Ching Jorge, and Program Officer, Attorney Mildred Ople. Today's session will let us learn the fundamental rights and reasons for participating in the democratic exercise of casting your vote. In our second session, we will have a deep dive on education issues and concerns, especially during this pandemic. And the last session, it is aimed that all participants will be able to choose the right and responsive leader. We will also experience a map voting process. With this, are you all excited? So what kind of Philippines do you envision in the next six years? Who among the national and local candidates can help us get there? I hope our three-part series of voters' education will let us understand the importance of this year's election. In one way or another, there is an LCF member organization who provided you the opportunity for proper education that may lead to prospects for employment or livelihood to availments of social or healthcare services. And more than ever, the pandemic made us realize that we have a social contract or moral obligation to get involved, especially for the marginalized individuals who may not have the same privileges as ours. Mga kabataang Pilipino, ang iyong pagboto ay ang iyong kakayahang pumili at ang iyong responsibilidad. Ito ay ang iyong kontribusyon sa paghubog ng ating bansa. Ito ay makakaapekto sa iyong buhay at kinabukasan. Take advantage of this opportunity that you are here. You are here for a purpose. Listen and absorb as much as you can to vote responsibly in May. And as this is a collective effort, we also challenge each of you to not just learn, but to proactively step up and take the lead in empowering and enabling every voter to make an informed decision. Everyone, the future starts with the youth. It starts with you. Marami pong salamat at magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Thank you so much, Mr. Raj Andal. Umpisa pa lang ay malaman na ang mga mensahe ng ating mga tagapagsalita mula sa LCF at Youthlet. Ngayon naman ay kikilalanin natin ang magbibigay kasagutan sa ating mga tanong kanina. Mr. Emil Tapnyo currently serves as the Youth Leadership Development Specialist at the Age Foundation. Concurrently, he leads the technical team of the Youth Leadership for Democracy or Youth Lead Program, which aims to strengthen participation of Filipino youth in the democratic governance. Mr. Tapnya has over 15 years of technical and management experience in designing and implementing interventions for youth leadership in political participation and social impact. He counts over 50 million US dollars in program portfolio funding from the USAID, the US Department of State, Australian Aid, UNDP, and the Philippine government. His areas of expertise include education, economic empowerment, and human rights with a focus on youth political participation, and social involvement. Right after earning a degree in public administration from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Mr. Tapnio has championed innovative leadership in the development sector. He regularly conducts trainings and workshops for young leaders and has presented on youth leadership, entrepreneurship, and technology at the United Nations headquarters in New York and Bangkok, the World Bank, the Youth Department of State, the Youth Congressional Youth Leadership Forum in Washington, D.C., and, numer and numerous universities in the U.S. and the Philippines. In 2018, he, complete, he completed his professional lead fellowship by the U.S. Department of State's Young, Young Southeast Asian Leaders Initiative, or YCD, in Hawaii and Washington, D.C., USA. In 2016, he was appointed as one of the global ambassadors of the International Young Leaders Assembly at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. Please help me welcome Mr. Emil Tapnio. 
Hi, Trity. Good morning. And good morning sa lahat ng mga uh, staff and, and uh, lead ng uh, members ng League of Corporate Foundations. Uh, marami marami salamat sa pag-attend uh, ng uh, Youth Voters Education, uh, Education Series na ito that uh, you co-organized with um, our teammates at YouthLed. Let me just share my screen, okay? Um, ayan. I hope you're seeing it right now. Yes. Can you see my screen? I hope you are. Okay. So, uh, una una, uh, just marhay na aga sa inyong sa Indigo Boss. Uh, I'm actually calling in uh, from Sorsogon City. So, um, as mentioned earlier, uh, we at Youthed were delighted to partner with uh, the League of Corporate Foundations to organize this initiative for fellow for fellow young professionals. Last Tuesday, um, I conducted a similar discussion for LCF scholars and. I'm very delighted to be doing this for the young professionals of the LCF members as I was once in your shoes more than 10 years ago. So my first job actually right after graduating from college was at the Metrofang, uh, Metrobank Foundation. So uh, shout out to Sir uh, Chiso Sobrepeña and of course sa mga uh, dati kong colleagues sa Metrobank Foundation na naandito sa talk na ito. So what we're doing right now is a momentous uh, step for us to understand how important voting is and how we should have an informed choice. This is particularly important um, as you are all ambassadors of CSR programs of your respective parent organization. So, dapat tayo bilang member ng, L ng ano, na, bilang staff ng mga uh, organizations natin, um, uh, tayo ay magandang uh, good role model, hindi lang para sa mga kapwa natin uh, opisina, but also paglawalabas tayo ng ating kumpanya. So again, um, today I'm here to talk about the different facets of youth engagement which includes voting during elections. So again, my name is Emil Tapnio of the Youth-Led Program from the Asia Foundation. In the next 20 minutes or less, uh, let's learn together the different forms of youth engagement. Pero before ako mag-start, uh, mag-usapan uh, itong content ng talk ko, um, I believe all of us here still qualify as youth, di ba? So ang base sa UN definition daw, 18 to 24 years old lang ang youth. Tama? Well, kung hindi, um, wag kayo mag-ala, don't worry, kasi... We can stick naman with the ASEAN definition ng youth, which is until 35 years old. Mm. Pero kung hindi pa rin, better yet, let's stick naman daw dun sa UK's Department of Work and Pensions uh, that did a poll which revealed that the age uh, at which we should stop calling ourselves young daw is 40 years, 8 months, and 2 weeks. So ayan, lahat tayo andito. We're all young with that definition. So there. So going back, um, we start first with the snapshot of how Filipino youth are engaged in various points of Philippine history. This is also to remind us that Filipino youth has always been at the forefront of pivotal points in our country's history. Um, next, let's find out the best practices naman and challenges of Filipino youth as they take up space and champion issues that are dear to their heart. Now, after revising the history and learning the context, let's check the path based for support for uh, Filipino youth, which in youth-led, we believe are essential elements in youth engagement. So this includes number one, youth leadership, youth coalition, civic education, at siyempre, a special section on voter empowerment. And finally, let's all learn how we can take part in some of the avenues presented to our youth sector. And I'm also going to talk about how, we can, how you can take part in the various initiatives of youth-led. So the Philippines today benefit from a long history of youth-led democracy building. Um, in fact, in 1896 and 1898, the anti-colonial revolutions were led predominantly by young people. So Sina Gabriela Silang, Sila Cerizal, Sila Orian de Jesus, Sila Andres Polifacio, they were actually all in their 20s and 30s when they fought for Philippine independence. So they were actually about our age, diba? These young leaders were not only revolutionaries, but also visionaries, drafting the first constitution in Asia with the goal of establishing a democratic state. So actually, uh, whenever I read this um, line and I, I present this, uh, no, this uh, slide, I can always relate. Um, as a student, um, I, I was uh, once a student leader, uh, an active uh, member of student organizations. But now that I'm already working, katulad ninyo, I would like to believe uh, myself as uh, also akin to how these people were in the past, wherein we're also uh, doing uh, development programs in our respective um, uh, uh, foundations para sa mga tao, di ba? So very important yung role na ginagawa natin sa murang edad natin. 
The sectoral struggle and political participation were only realized in 1937 um, because of the Act 4112 granting women the right of suffrage was implemented. And when the peasant movements gained meaning, meaningful participation in political parties and actually filling up of government positions. So no araw kasi, karamihan sa mga na-appoint lang or mga naging parte ng government, mga mayaman, di ba? Mga, mga, mga may kapangyarihan. Pero mula ng taon na to, nag-start na na magkaroon ng uh, parte ang mga marginalized sector uh, sa iba-ibang government positions. Now, jump naman tayo sa 1940s. Um, at the age of 25, Luis Sarup led the Hukbalhap in guerrilla operations against the Japanese occupants. So, And also, after World War II, uh, Mr. Tarup continued championing for agrarian reform. His struggle on behalf of the poor uh, farmers persuaded local and national leaders to strengthen the legal rights of farm workers and led to a more equitable distribution of farmland. So, diba? si Mr. Tarup, sobrang, ano, sobrang, sobrang galing ang ginagawa niya at that age. So I'm sure easy natin nung 25 tayo ano bang ginawa natin. All right. So jumping na jumping to the 1970s, the three month outbreak of violent demonstrations known known as the first quarter storm saw students and youth unrest against the Marxist dictatorship peaking in January 1970. This period was also a coalition of youth networks and youth organizations fighting a dictatorship emerge. So um Nung, nung ako isang sudyante pa sa, sa UP Diliman, um, I was actually looking at the history of a lot of uh, UP organizations and I noticed that a lot of them were actually formed during the 1970s. So um, this that's actually an example na ang dami talagang nagsama-samang mga kabataan noon uh, para ma-form uh, ma at makipaglaban sa dictatorship. Um, when Marcos uh, declared martial law in 1972, the 1935 constitution was scrapped an interim batasang pamansa was created and a new 1973 constitution was adopted. And the election for the interim batasang pamansa was called for in 1978. So that election was claimed to be towards restoration of old political order, but Marcos's purpose was to actually gain legitimacy for his unpopular administration and to create a rubber stamp legislature. Um, that exercise defied democratic procedures and was characterized by rampant electoral manipulation done by the Marcos government to ensure um, victory. Um, I'd also like to highlight this slide. Um, in uh, April 1970, the reemergence of women's movement was marked by formation of an all-women's group. Yung pala ng grupong ito ay malayang kilusan ng bagong kababaihan or free movement of new women with inspired uh, cream of makipaka. So, para sa mga kababayahan na dito sa talk na ito, sa discussion na ito, ma-inspire sana tayo na di ba, yung mga kababayahan ay nagsasama-sama na yung panahon na ito. And by the way guys, itong makibaka na grupo na ito, ito yung pinakaunang all-women's group na na-form after World War II and it happened during uh, 1972 uh, fight the Marcos leadership. Now, jump naman tayo sa 1980s. The Aquino assassination in 1983 resulted in waves of protest forcing the creation of wider democratic space. So yung batasang pambansa elections na nangyari noong 1984 uh, triplaced the interim, pambansang, uh, interim batasang pambansa. That exercise was also intended to divert the people's attention away from the Aquino assassination in 1983. Still, that period was marked by weakening popularity of Marcuses and the people's growing political will to carry that their sentiments are reflected in election results. Now, um, when uh, Corazon Aquino um, uh, uh, started his administration, um, Aquino's program of restoring democracy, uh, promoting stability, and establishing political legitimacy involved three major electoral exercises. So number one was the national plebiscite for the approval of the 1987 constitution. So ito yung same constitution that we're using right now. Number two is the election for members of the Senate and the House of Representatives in uh, May 1987 and the local elections in January 1988. So the 1987 constitution also provided for a multi-party system. Um, the 1987 institution established a new system of elections. The terms of representatives were reduced from four years to three years, and the presidential term um, was lengthened from four to six years. Um, senators also served a six-year term, and uh, the, the right to suffrage became universal at the age of 18. Um, I'd like to also highlight that when the 1987 constitution um, was drafted, um, the youth sector was actually uh, specifically uh, enjoined or actually involved during the crafting of this. Um, the representative at that time was um, C. Si, uh, Chito Gascon, uh, the late Chito Gascon, uh, the former head of the Commission on Human Rights. So he was the former chairperson of the UP Student Council and uh, he was asked to, uh, to 
to uh, provide inputs. Uh, he actually did several consultations among the youth sector in the Philippines and pinasok niya talaga yung sa 1987 constitution. So, um, as years go by after 1986, um, maraming parte talaga ng history natin ang ang ano, ang naging ano, ang naging naging marubdob ang pagiging aktibo, ang pagiging aktibo ng mga kabataan. So ayan. So, um, before I move forward to the next section, magtatanong ako, sino sa mga bayani na nabanggit ko kanina ang mga nasa 20s and 80s, uh, 20s and 30s pa lang na naging active na sa Pahikibaka? Sige nga, kung natandaan niyo mga sino, mga sinabi ko, um, you can type in your answers dito sa ano, dito sa sa chat link and at may kung mapipili kayo ang aking mga teammate ay magpapadala sa inyo ng mahiwagang premyo. Ayan, so, di ba kanina may mga ano ko, may mga bilanggit ako ng mga uh, young revolutionaries daw. Sino-sino yung mga yon? Dali, magsulat kayo. There are 64 people in this ano, in this chat. So, I'm sure uh, may ma may maala, wala may maalala kayo, di ba? Sabi ko kanina, there were uh, revolutionaries in their 20s and 30s na Uh, who were active. Ayan. So anyway, I'll move forward. Isipin nyo lang kung sino yun at isulat nyo dito, okay? Yung may tama, um, may premyo. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, we've talked about um, the, the, we've just talked about uh, the various points in our history when uh, youth involvement was really strong. Now, we're moving forward naman where uh, Filipino youth began taking spaces in various issues and forms. Um, Slowly, we started seeing young persons with disability uh, are now actively participating in their right to suffrage. So, itong picture to, this is during the uh, 2013 Philippine midterm elections. We saw uh, over 65,000 PWD voters, at least in Cebu province alone. So, this woman in this photo, uh, her name is Ye Antiporta, uh, and he was one of the PWD voters who mustered courage to register in 2012 and voted in 2013. So, yan. I, ako actually yung nag-take ng picture na to. Sobrang... Uh, Sobrang no, heartwarming lagi yung kwento na ito. Um, next is, having recognized as the greatest equalizer, students across the country called for higher state subsidy to education. In particular, was the call for at least 6% of GDP spending on education in a developing country like the Philippines. So this, this was actually um, based in the UN uh, study uh, called uh, by the Lors Commission, uh, wherein sinasabi lang na dapat ang developing country lang daw ay kailangan mag-spend ng Uh, hindi bababa sa 6% ng kanilang GDP. Uh, sa kasulukuyan, this call has actually uh, been echoed again by the Vice President Tanin Robredo who said that education is the most tangible way to capacitate our youth. So, ayan. Next naman is, ito, uh, usapin ng mga LGBTQIA+. Love is love, sabi nga nila. Ang equal rights are also human rights to all LGBTQIA young couples who now asserts their right to raise their own family. Um, we saw also more and more students actively participating uh, in student movements um, with a renewed call for the right to self-determination of uh, our Muslim brothers and sisters. Mas dumadami ang Bangsamoro youth who are ensuring their participation in bar governance. In fact, ang youth-led, meron kaming partners sa uh, Cotabato City, uh, sa BARM, uh, ito yung UVPN. So talagang, ano, talagang aktibo sila sa paghimok sa mga kabataan para maging parte ng pamamahala sa BARM. Ayan. Um, in addition, by and large, the call for climate justice are pushed also by the youth sector. So narandaman natin yung iba-ibang sakuna na dinadaanan ng Pilipinas at ang mga kabataan uh, aktibo na sa pag-push ng climate justice. Hindi lang tayo uh, contento dun sa pag-tree planting, di ba? Lahat tayo gusto natin ng mas ma malawakan at mas um, reform-oriented na call for, uh, for climate change or to, to combat climate change. In addition, youth also cited and fights for better welfare and security for labor workers. So ito napakalaga nito kasi tayo, tayo uh, na mga young professionals, we're part of the labor force already. And as really as uh, the young, the, the youth, they're already seeing um, how they could mobilize for you know better welfare para sa mga uh, workers. So ayan, so I've, I, I, I've discussed some issues where um, youth became active. I've also talked about uh, the history of youth engagement. Now, over years, we experienced shrinking civic spaces and democratic backsliding. So, nagkakaroon ng growing disillusionment on politics and governance, and it's becoming prevalent, right? Uh, weak rule of law, weak political ideologies, and parties and governance mechanisms at the local level are marred by tokenism and political dynasties. Ayan, nakikita natin ito sa iba-ibang LGU. 
the youth are now presented with challenges that hinder effective political participation. In fact, tayo lang, kahit tayo dito, mapas, di ba, minsan may isip natin parang ang gulo-gulo, nakakapagod maki, makipag-usap sa politika. And these are actually because of the effects of uh, what I've just mentioned. Um, prevalent signs of disenchantment with democracy are also surfacing among the youth sector through a combination of disengagement with traditional democratic mechanisms and voicing out their concerns. So, this current social politi social political environment presented varying opinions on what democracy means for a country. Conversely, it also presented three opportunities for collective democratic participation among the citizenry, citizenry especially the youth. So I'm sure sa inyo, sa mga respective LCF um, organizations inyo, you're also doing uh, activities like this. But sa youth-led, we at youth-led believes that number one, if the political leadership of the youth is developed, Number two, if youth participation in governance processes through youth networks is increased. And number three, if effective youth education is institutionalized, then democratic governance will be strengthened. So isa -isa natin, okay? isa -isa natin. Um, when we talk about youth leadership, uh, we at YouthLed believes in empowering and enhancing the leadership skills of young leaders in schools, civil society, and the private sector. This will increase knowledge and participation in democratic governance and encourage political participation whether at a local, regional, or national school. So actually, um, sa, uh, youth leadership component ng youth-led, we are doing uh, immersive training for 30 uh, emerging youth leaders. We've partnered actually with, um, with uh, uh, Ayala Foundation Incorporated, who's an LCF member para dito. So yun. So also, I'd like to sh uh, give shout out then some iba ibang mga LCF members who are also doing youth leadership programs. Number uh, Second is on youth coalition. So in youth coalitions, we in youth that believes in enabling the growth of empowered and independent youth constituencies with access to opportunities to engage democratic governance activities. So yung mga capability training natin, yung mga workshop natin in the development of local governance policies will directly benefit the youth and the community that they're engaged with. Um, lagi namin sinasabi sa youth-led that we need to understand the actual needs first uh, before jumping into a prescriptive training. So I hope you're also doing it in your respective organizations. Now, at the very least, you do uh, a training needs analysis, uh, which will generate uh, buy-in from your audience and will make the applications of trainings more sustainable. So, um, kung malala nyo, November 18, um, yung Comelec uh, said that uh, nearly 67 uh, million voters will be eligible to cast their ballots for the 2022 polls. And around at least 30% of that number would come from the youth sector, 18 to 30. Sabi to ni Comelec spokesperson James Menes. So, Guys, let's capitalize on this pivotal number to swing the direction of our country. So I would dare say that the past six years, we've really hit rock bottom and there's no way but to bounce up. And syempre, lastly, um, sa youth-led, we believe in an effective civic education program that seeks to combine concepts of democracy, citizenship, and democratic governance with policy on action programs that will allow the youth to practice civic duties and civic engagement in their daily lives. So in the Philippine experience in civic education, um, we're actually teaming with best practices both from the social intervention carried by CSOs, LGUs, and the private sector. So tayo, or tayo na parte ng LCF, we're part of uh, the CS, civil, society, uh, civil society and isa kayo actually sa may pinakamarubdob na mga civic education program. So, sa youth led, gusto natin i-harness yun at gusto natin institutionalize yun. On the other hand, the traditional civic education naman from the academe is still as, uh, seen as a potent way to instill values to the youth. So, right now, we are reassessing and representing to the public um, what is crucial to the spirit of civic education. So, these three pathways will actually create generations uh, to the youth uh, and we believe that this would be scaled on the effective ways to engage politically. We would see youth who are aware uh, of the power and impact of their collective voices. And number three, um, youth who are aware of civic responsibilities. So we believe that this would lead to a dynamic population of youth uh, engaged in democratic governance. So yeah, I've talked about the three pathways of support or three uh, program components of youth-led. Now, we're going to deep dive naman on a uh, specific activity of youth led that we are passionate about, and that's the voter education. So, but first, uh, let's understand some of the fundamental basis of this right. Um, the human right to vote, especially in the Philippines, um, is actually embodied in three instruments. So number one, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, and the 1987 uh, Constitution. So, um, 
uh, basically, uh, this uh, mandates universal, universality of right, uh, equality in access to public service, and secrecy in votes. To be specific, the 1987 Constitution guarantees that we are a sovereign people. We are all government authority uh, come from. Sovereignty or the power to govern is exercised um, directly through suffrage and indirectly through people officials elected by the people. So itong nangyayari sa ating ngayon sa bayan natin is actually the right to suffrage. The will of the people then is best expressed in clear, clean, and orderly and honest election. So ayan. Um, Ayan. So now that uh, we've established that at the onset, uh, let's now discuss the power to vote, knowing the election stakeholders and how to vote. So in youth-led, uh, we actually formed a uh, campaign called Kabila Kasa 2022, Hamon sa Kabataang uh, Botante para sa Halalan. So napapalob ito sa tatlong three-point uh, three agenda, ang Kabila Kasa 22. Nang una, um, we have Kasama Ka or Accessible Voting Registration and uh, Accessible registration and voting for every citizen. So bilang isang Pilipino, naniniwala tayo sa youth-led na kasama ka upang palakasin ang kamalayan. So last year, youth-led actually um, conducted a massive voters registration. We've directly um, uh, assisted thousands of uh, first-time uh, voters and react, uh, people who are reactivating their uh, votes. We've also worked with a lot of organizations on the ground to assist um, and, and do their uh, uh, respective voters' uh, registration. So I'll talk more about the numbers of these mamaya maya. Currently, um, youth-led uh, has uh, already pivoted towards kabahagi ka part and that, and that we're already doing voters' education and issue-based agenda. So uh, naniniwala tayo sa youth-led na kayo, kayong mga kabataan, kabahagi kayo sa pananaliksik at pagbibigay linaw sa mga isyong kinakaharap ng bansa. So when we vote, when we campaign for our uh, candidates, I really, really hope that we look at them in an issue-based manner. Sana iwasan natin yung personality-based politics. Sana sumusuporta tayo sa tao dahil sinasalamin ng mga kandidatong ito ang mga aspirations natin, yung mga pangarap natin para sa bansa natin. So yun. And lastly, after elections, uh, tayo sa Lutled, naniniwala tayo na yung role natin at responsibility natin does not stop from registration and voting alone. Dapat kaisa tayo sa pag uh, sa panawagan ng good governance and civic education. Tayo sa youth na niniwala sa pagpapatibay sa isang maayos, makabago at makapilipinong pamamahala. So yan ang ano, yan ang, uh, what do you call this, yan ang uh, three-point agenda ng uh, youth led. Now, um, di, uh, uh, diving deeper, uh, let's talk about uh, the voters' education campaign or yung kabahagi ka. Right. So we'll, um, we'll talk more about uh, these details. I'm actually uh, presenting you the voters election toolkit that Youth Led has developed uh, with uh, Youth Vote Philippines. So Youth Vote Philippines is isang organization ng mga kabataan. Ito ay pinamunuan nila Ching Jorge, ang aming COP ngayon, at ni Dred uh, uh, Ople. Uh, at um, nakatuwa na ibinabahagi nila ito sa mas malakihang uh, audience through the Youth Led program. So the question is, Bakit kaya ba mahalaga ang eleksyon, di ba? Lagi tinatanong natin, o oh, bumoto kayo, bumoto kayo, mag-register kayo. Pero bakit kaya ba mahalang, mahalaga ang eleksyon? Kasi sinasabi na ng konstitusyon natin na ang Pilipinas daw is a democratic and republican state. So yung soberenya, um, it's uh, in the people and the government authority uh, and the power of the government actually emanates from us. Galing sa mga tao, tao yun. Yung mga niluluklok natin sa posisyon ay bilang mga representante lamang natin. Kaya sinasabi ko na um, ang, ang, ang pagboto natin should be a shared value ng mga kandidatong um, inulukulok natin sa posisyon. Um, sa paghihimay, uh, sinasabi natin na ang Pilipinas is both a democratic government and a republican state. So basically, a democratic uh, government means that it's governed by the people. It's a form of government in, in which uh, we're in um, the supreme power is vested in the people. So again, sa, sa ating galing and exercised by our representatives uh, who are the elective agents under the free electoral system. As a republican state, um, uh, the power is held by the people and the representatives are, uh, you know, are, are the people that, that we elect. Um, an election is also a process in which people vote to choose a person or a group uh, to hold people in the election. Uh, or group of people to hold an official position. So basically, ito naman uh, ang, pagpapa, ang graphical representation ng relationship ng tao uh, at sa mga naluklok natin sa position. So sinasabi ng 1987 Constitution na 
public office is a public trust, di ba? So public officers and employees must at all times be accountable to the people. So uh, they should serve them with utmost responsibility, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency. Act with patriotism and justice and even lead modest lives. So ito ah, um, integrity, loyalty, and efficiency. So ito yung laging ang, ang hinihingi natin dapat sa mga kandidato natin. Uh, sinasalamin ba nila ang kani, uh, ng kanilang um, ng kanilang katauhan uh, yung pagiging isang leader? Meron ba silang integridad para pamunuan ng bayan natin? Kasi as a public leader, as a public official, you're a role model to everyone. Di ba? Kung ikay pala mura, people would think na, ah, okay lang pala magmura, di ba? Kung, kung ikaw ay tatamad-tamad, then people would say, ah, okay lang pala na huwag pumunta sa mga ito kasi tatamad-tamad yung presidente natin, natin. So gusto ba natin ng ganoon? And syempre, gusto natin ng someone who's loyal. Loyal to the Philippines. Someone hindi tayo ibibenta sa ibang bansa. Someone na hindi magpapalipin sa gusto ng ibang bayan. So yun yung mga isa sa mga gusto natin. Now, the next question is, um, bakit natin kailangan bumoto? Diba? Bakit nga ba? So simple lang naman, dahil nais natin magkaroon ng isang maayos, tapat, at mahusay na pamumuno. Um, ito ay isa lamang sa mga, uh, mga iba, sa, iba sa mga rason kung ba't natin kailangan uh, bumoto. Makapi ng narapat na pinuno. Very important yan. Diba? Mabigyan tayo ng, kar- ng, kar- ng kapangyarihan na yun. Makapagdisenyo ng narapat na gobyerno. Katulad na sinasabi ko kanina, um, yung responsibility natin doesn't stop with registration and voting. Uh, to be part of the design of the next government means that we can be actively voicing out um, what are our aspirations and what are our dreams, what uh, do we want, what do we need for the government. At syempre, lastly, makabuo ng isang tapat at maayos na pamumuno. Um, balikan ko lang to guys. When we uh, elect pala uh, public officials, especially yung mga nasa executive position, let's not just elect for leaders. Let's also look for managers. Someone who could actually manage the entire bureaucracy. Di ba? Parang tayo, parang sa mga respective um, organizations natin. When we look at our executive directors, when you look at our respective supervisors, they are not just leaders. They're also managers, di ba? They should be all be able to look at the different facets of uh, the organization. And that's also what we want uh, for our country. Ayan. Um, this is, again, uh, this is also a snapshot of what I mentioned earlier on the electoral cycle. So last year from the voters' registration until last Monday was the pre-election period. And then starting Tuesday until May 9 is the elections period. Uh, dito na mga kampanya yung mga kandidato. Dito na tayo magkakaroon ng mga iba-ibang uh, COMELEC sanction activities. At syempre yung uh, post-election period is where we're supposed to monitor yung mga campaign promise nila. Yan, very important. Yan. Ayan. So, um, in the next few slides, um, I will be talking about um, understanding our power and right to vote and also uh, talk about uh, the uh, role of the COMELEC and the automated elections and syempre some election checklist. But I'm also enjoining you guys, kayo mga nandito, na in the successive sessions of this voter education series ng LCF at Youth Led, um, you will be uh, able to understand who are we going to elect and also we're going to do mock elections katulad ng sinabi ni Sir Reg Andal kanina. Ayan. So, um, okay, before tayo mag-move forward, isang paalala lamang na ang Philippine government, unang-una, they do checks and balances. Uh, they have the power and they have the duties and responsibilities which are actually emanated through these three co-equal branches in the government. So the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. So right now, ang mga iahalal natin sa May 2022 elections are all part of the executive department, right? Ah, hindi, mali pala, mali pala. Ang iahalal natin sa executive would be the president, the vice president, um, the mayors, ang legislator naman are the congressmen and uh, the, the, uh, the senator. So pagpapalawig, may pagpapalawig sa usapin nito, when we go to uh, the chapter 3 and that is uh, uh, you who to elect. And ito ay mapaloob sa mga next sessions natin na makuha from uh, the sessions. So um, again, chapter 1, understanding the right to vote. When we talk about right to suffrage, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng right to suffrage? So the right to suffrage um, means that voter registration benefits our country as a whole and fits the exact idea of democracy. Um, ang bayan natin, uh, it gains more when we vote and we elect the right leaders. Um, Filipinos who register and vote during the elections are more connected to the community and have always um, have a better perspective on the election. Um, as a nation naman, um, that is rich in history and struggle for freedom and democracy, patuloy ng mga binanggit ko kanina sa unang slides ko, our country becomes stronger when citizens of all ages, backgrounds, and sectors and groups 
participate for it uh, in its height of the election. So from registration to education to voting, and it shows the true meaning of people power, kumbaga, voting right and voting for our voices to be heard. Um, our participation during elections is twofold. Um, it's both a right and an obligation. Diba? It's a political right conferred by the Constitution, which we must uh, maximize to take the gains of exercising democracy in the Philippines. So our failure to exercise our right to suffrage is not punishable by law, since it's not mandatory in nature, but it makes us as an irresponsible citizen. So yun guys, ha? I hope na yun natin yun. Um, Lagi kong nakikita uh, sa uh, social media na uh, pag halimbawa, pag halimbawa may mga tao na hindi pares yung, ano, yung uh, kinakampanya natin sabihin nila, respect our choice, respect our choice, ganyan-ganyan, uh, ito yung gusto namin iboto. Yes, totoo yun, naniniwala ako na, ano, na may karapatan ka mamili sa kung sino yung boto mo. But I would also argue na I hope that your choice is an informed choice. Kasi every time you vote for someone, a bit in a different position, it would actually affect um, the future of our country. So I hope you vote conscientiously. You vote sa, na sa tingin mo, ito ang, ano, ang magandang uh, mahala sa ating bayan. Ayan. Alright, so now moving forward, let's talk about um, the commission elections and the automated elections. So the COMELEC, uh, briefly, uh, it's actually... Uh, one of the constitutional commissions which are presented in the 1987 constitution ng bayan natin. Um, its nature is expected to be independent in their nature, similar to the Civil Service Commission and the Commission Audit. Um, COMELEC is also the principal government agency tasked by the constitution to enforce and administer all laws and regulations concerning the conduct of regular and special elections. And it is also the body that is designed to be constitutionally independent from executive, legislative and judicial branches of government to ensure the conduct of free, fair, and honest elections. So it's actually na, ang exact wording na nakapalog sa COMELEC. Um, and uh, yes, dapat ang COMELEC talaga ay free from any influence from any uh, government uh, or any elective uh, positions. Naalala nyo guys yung Hello Garci, di ba? Noong 2004. Sana hindi nyo mangyari yun. So, yeah. Anyway, okay, isa-isahin natin. Ano ba ang kapangyarihan ng COMELEC? So una-una, uh, COMELEC enforces and administers all laws and regulations relative to the conduct of an election, plebiscite initiative, referendum, and recall. Um, they also exercise exclusive uh, jurisdiction over all contests or ibig sabihin mga pagtatanong, uh, pag, pag, pag contest ng, mga, uh, ng, mga, ng election results. Um, they also decide uh, on all questions affecting elections. Um, they also deputize um, law enforcement law enforcement agencies and instrumentalities of the government for the purpose of ensuring free, orderly, and honest and credible elections. Ayan. Um, COMELEC also registers political parties, organizations, or coalitions, um, and they must present their platform or program of government and accredited citizens' arts of commission and elections. Ayan. Um, the COMELEC also filed petition in court for inclusion or exclusion of voters investigate and prosecute cases of violation of election laws. At syempre, the Commission on Elections also, they recommend to the Congress the effective measures to minimize election spending. Ito, napakaganda yung usapin na to kasi, di ba, maraming mga butas itong election laws na to. Naalala nyo ba yung isang interview, di ba, where in sinabi ng isang presidential poll na he pocketed daw the 50 million excess funds. So parang, ano ba, ano ba yung moral, ano nun, uh, dilemma nun, uh, bilang bilang tao na nakikinig sa sinabi ng tao yun, di ba? Um, these are additional powers of the COMELEC. Um, yeah, but essentially, again, the power of the COMELEC and responsibility of the COMELEC is to ensure that there's uh, an orderly elections every six years for presidential elections and every three years for midterm elections. So, uh, ang COMELEC, katulad kayo sa quiz, yun, sinasabi niya na it's composed of uh, one chairman and six commissioners and recently or right now, di ba, we saw two commissioners and the chairman uh, retiring. So, nasa proseso tayo ng pag-lok-lok ng mga na mabuo ulit ang COMELEC Commission. Ayan. So, itong section ito, katulad yung sinabi ko, um, this will be further discussed in the next uh, series or uh, yeah, next session nyo sa Youth Kids, uh, Youth uh, voters and chicken series ito, and sana uh, mag-attend kayo nito. Ayan. Um, jumping on to the election checklist, uh, these are some of uh, the items that uh, youth net and youth vote are also, you know, believes in. So, um, specifically, 
right now we believe in creating candidate assessment card uh, wherein um, we are also enjoining you to look at the solid platform of the candidate uh, to also look at the past accomplishments kung meron man ang mga kandidato uh, we're also enjoining you to look at education backgrounds diba? Um, very important yung education background, guys, para maintindihan natin kung ano nga ba ang kakayahan ng, uh, ng taong ito. Wala naman problema, di ba, kung hindi tayo nakapagtapos. Nagkaroon naman tayo ng presenter at hindi nakapagtapos. Ang importante lang, huwag magsinungaling kung nakapagtapos or hindi. Kasi we want someone who has integrity. Okay, at syempre, we're also looking at the work history and leadership track record of the candidates. Um, we would also look at the programs or, or policies of the candidates. Uh, ano yung kanila mga pinapropose kung first-time voter sila or first-time candidate? At ano yung naman yung mga implement nila kung paulit-ulit silang tumatakbo? Uh, personally ako, uh, I'm also looking at the stand on issues of the candidates. So ako, nitinan ko, ano ba ang, ang uh, tindig ng mga uh, kandidatong ito on education? on women's and children's rights, on environment sustainability. So I hope kayo din, you're also looking at, uh, again, the stand on issues of the government. Paulit-ulit kong sinasabi, uh, ang pagboto natin, it should have a shared value, shared value natin, uh, at dapat sinasalamin ng mga biboto natin, mga aspiration natin sa buhay. Also, let's look at the candidate's lifestyle. Di ba? Um, hindi na kasi enough, guys, yung style N na ayaw namang i-release. Di ba? So tingnan natin, ano ba yung lifestyle ng mga kandidatong ito? Sinasabi ng mga kandidato na, Laki ako sa hirap, mahirap ako, ganun-ganun. Pero pag tinignan mo naman kung saan nakatira, naka, nakatira sa Forbes Park na yun, nakatira sa Ayala, Alabang, may mga sariling resort. So parang, parang, may, parang may disalignment yata doon sa, sa sinasabi niya, sa lifestyle niya. So yung mga kailangan tayong tignan. And of course, uh, public record. And lastly, uh, I would really, really enjoy you guys to look uh, at if they're compliant to the laws, policies, and other non-corrupt practices uh, were they found to be guilty of any uh, corruption issues. So medyo mahirap yun. Mga hindi nakapagbayad ng tax. Very important yun. Kasi again guys, when you vote for someone, they become role mo models. Kung hindi pala nagbabayad ng tax, eh, huwag naman tayo magbayad ng tax. Diba? Ganoon lang kasimple yun. So ayaw natin ang ganoon guys. Ayun. Ayan. Siyempre, um, during the election, uh, election day, uh, we would want to bring all this necessary information. Siyempre, yung ID at yung listahan ng inyong mga kandidato. Ayan. So, katulad na sinabi ko kanina, ang youth led ay bumuo ng kampanya uh, para sa voters' education uh, registration and turnout campaign na ito. Tinatawag natin itong kabila ka sa 2022 um, campaign. Uh, we are enjoining you as members of um, uh, LCF uh, organizations and also the LCF organizations who are uh, present here today. We're enjoining you to take part in this. Uh, nabangit ko na sa inyo kayo na itong three-point agenda namin. Um, specifically, uh, here are some things that we are doing in terms of uh, the, pre -ele the election period where we are right now. Um, YouthLed would take part in candidates' fora, dialogue, town hall debates, and meetings. In fact, uh, we're working with uh, several institutions right now uh, to support them um, as we hold presidential and senatorial debates. So, sana mangyari yun. Uh, we're also doing monitoring uh, during the elections, both for the local and national um, uh, campaign. And uh, we're also preparing an election checklist. Um, we are also, actually, ito pala, super excited ako dito. We're uh, pulling together all the youth representatives or youth leads of the various presidential ball uh, presidential balls and sana ma-air natin ito para makita natin kung ano nga ba ang, ano, ang programa ng mga bawat presidential balls na ito para sa kabataan. So I hope you, you look at this. Um, Post-election, uh, the Kabilang Kasa 2022 uh, coalition would also uh, review and assess campaign promises. Uh, we're also going to lobby for the amendment improvement of the election laws. We're also empowering um, youth networks to participate in governance processes. So we actually have uh, projects for local youth development councils, for Sangguniang Kabataan, and uh, yung mga trains natin for local youth development plans. At, uh, right now, we're also putting together, we're going to establish learning hubs called Civic Hubs, and we are going to implement projects in different parts of the country. So I hope the LCF members would also look at this as something that we can collaborate together. Yan. So these are just some of the uh, almost 200 activities that uh, we've uh, implemented over the past uh, few months. So iba -iba yan. before the elections, we did voters registration, uh, we did um, uh, podcast interviews, we did uh, TV interviews, we did uh, radio interviews, we, and dami, sobrang dami. So these are just some of the uh, uh, activities that we did, including itong ginagawa natin ngayon for LCF. So 
feel free if you want to to uh to partner with us in your respective constituencies in your respective audiences uh we'll be glad to uh go with you guys for voters education um these are some of the just uh, these are some of the issue based election campaign stickers that uh we've uh, created so uh if you want uh, you can connect red for this we can give you some but feel free to uh you can print this out uh, maganda to guys i dedicate sa likod ng laptop so yun yung mga in sa mga kids ngayon so ayan um in summary, here are some of the things that we've conducted uh, para sa uh, kabila ka sa 2022 elections. Um, uh, we've conducted over 84 coalition building activities. We've had 20 co uh, coalitions built. Um, we've reached out 1.5 billion people uh, because of our voters ed. We've assisted uh, thousands of voter registrants. Um, right now, we have 891 more member organizations in our uh, coalition. Um, we also listed down uh, at least uh, 8,000 uh, who listen to our podcast. So, meron pala tayong kaming podcast na ginagawa with Puma Podcast. So, uh, please uh, look at our uh, our Facebook page, um, Youth Led uh, PH, para makita nyo ito. You can actually also uh, ping this and then broadcast this to your respective uh, members. So, ayan. So, ito naman yung summary ng youth organizations who are part of our campaign, uh, who are part of our coalition rather. So, 891 siya, iba-ibang iba -ibang, uh, organization. And they're, they're also coming from different parts of the Philippines. So, ayan. Gusto ko ako hinihimo kayo ta sana sumama kayo sa coalition na ito. Ayan. So, some of uh, the numbers that uh, we are working on right now, uh, so a total of 65 million uh, at least 65 million voters this coming May 2022 elections. Um, some of the things that uh, youth that did was uh, we partnered with uh, some official community activities. Um, we also uh, worked with several local election officers um, uh, for voters ed, like for example, in Iloilo, in Sorsogon, in Bolacan, Baguio City Bar, Mindoro, Ibarasakan, Iloilo, and Laguna. So kayong LCF members, if you have your respective localities, then again, we're, we're, we're free to be part of uh, this program then. Um, we've also uh, conducted satellite and special registrations in partnership with some of our member organizations like Lente, Jerry Ross Foundation, uh, MRP, and Registro Mindoro, which led to 15,000 um, uh, direct registrants uh, from the vulnerable sectors. So, yun, um, ito yung uh, ilan sa mga ginagawin namin um, in the next few months. We'll do voters' ed. We'll do nudge to vote with the uh, youth sector reps of the presidential votes, which I said um, for offline activities, we're also doing barangay and parish-based voters ed sessions, and hopefully we can do local debate with in select LGUs in partnership with some law schools and integrate part of the Philippines. So yeah, um, just to promote then that youth led is also uh, enjoining everyone uh, to um, watch the uh, e-rally live streaming. So merong e-rally uh, e e-rally channels ang Comelec. Uh, which will begin with live streaming every 7 p.m. ng mga uh, iba-ibang presentation at debate. So, ilan lamang sa mga magpapa... Ilan lamang sa mga na, 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 na book na are yan. Yung mga presidential candidates, itong mga vice presidential candidates. So, let's look for uh, the next episodes para makita natin itong mga uh, ating mga sinusuportahang kandidato. Ayan. So, okay. For next steps, ano ba mga pwede natin gawin? Okay, guys, patapos na ako. Uh, ayan. Ano bang pwede natin gawin? Um... Number one, uh, we would enjoin you to participate and conduct your own voters education campaign in your, lo your locality. You can find voter education tools uh, in this website. So it's uh, youthled.ph.org slash resources. So uh, ang youthled at Youth Vote Philippines, we put together and we've uploaded all these materials for you to download and you can, you can, you look you localize it on your own. Um, you can also uh, watch candidate debates and interviews by reputable organizations at Shempre, uh, register and vote. Um, in terms of policy reform and good governance, um, I'm also uh, encouraging you to develop uh, the national youth agenda together with the youth sector. Um, we would also want you to be more vigilant with your elected government officials at Shempre, monitor the platform of government and campaign promises are honored. So, sana yung mga pinangako ay mapatutuhanan nila. Um, patuloy din tayo sa pag-develop ng capacity ng mga youth. Alam ko, tayong mga parte ng um, LCF, uh, we do a lot of capacity uh, building, capacity development. So, similarly with youth that we also are doing uh, capacity development for youth leaders. Um, we also want you to support Sangguni Ang Kapatan in your area. Ito yung first platform wherein youth can be actually part of um, uh, governance. At syempre, 
uh, take advantage of learning hubs in your locality. So, so you said uh, we have project exits and NCBCA hubs. Yeah, and so, yeah, uh, yeah, so. Um, the citizen uh, voters are actually entitled to free and informed choice on whom to vote, diba? Like sinasabi to. But it must be dictated by the genuine welfare of the majority. Every individual political choices and decisions made by the citizen voters will determine the kind of government that will serve them. And time and again, the struggle for independence and for democratic governance resulted in a kind of political system, political leaders, and electorate that we have right now. And ulit, kung tatanungin mo ako bakit uh, ba't importante ang election, election has been one major mechanism in practice of democracy. And it's still hope to continue to serve as a vehicle towards genuine democratic governance at making uh, makatotohan na lamang ito kung lahat tayo ay bumoto sa May 2022 elections. So ayan. Um, sa pagtatapos ko, gusto ka lamang ibalik yung picture na to. Uh, this is actually a picture of me when I was um, an elementary student in Sorcerer and Pilot Elementary School way back in 1995 to 1996. I was once part of um, the student council. So that was, what, almost 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, gusto ko lamang uh, i-share sa inyo na nung bata ako, nung during kaba, my, my younger years, uh, maraming tumaya sa akin. Maraming sumuporta sa akin. Hanggang ngayon, maraming tumaya at maraming sumuporta sa akin. So tanang, sana tayo, tayong mga young professionals, Ibalik natin yun sa mga kabataan. Let's pay it forward by also taking it risk at tumaya rin tayo sa mga kabataan para mas maraming katulad natin uh, ang maging tulad natin pagdating uh, ng panahon. So, ayun, maraming salamat ulit. On behalf of Youth Led, uh, Youth Leadership uh, for Democracy, maraming salamat at magandang umaga. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat Emil sa napaka-informative at thought-provoking challenge sa ating mga participants today. Congratulations din kay Denise Ayra Tanales na napakabilis mag-type at sumagot sa ating Zoom chat. Mamaya lamang po ay um, magre-reach out po kami ang aming team para ma-message ma ka namin kung paano pumakuha ang inyong premyo sa araw na ito. So we will now open the Zoom chat. A webinar Q and A, or if any participant wants to open their microphone, uh, their mic, and ask our speaker directly his or her or their questions, please do so. And so, pwede na po tayo magtanong kay Emil or Kuya Emil, guys. So while waiting for people to put their, <laughs> ayan, wag kayo mahiya matanong kay Emil, para ano yan, magaling yan sa mga God. While waiting for people to put their questions in the Q and A box or in the Zoom chat. Here's a trivia about our participants this morning. Some of the issues that the youth or young professionals want the next president to address based on your response in the registration for this webinar are, number one, economy and the health concerns and problems during the pandemic. We also have, con uh, we also have here the concrete con COVID-19 recovery plan or improving the healthcare support. Number three, equity among marginalized groups in terms of social inclusion, job, opportun job opportunities and benefits from the state. We also have here agriculture or the high importation of food, but less exportation of agricultural products and pathways towards innovative agriculture. Then uh, we also have here the farmers and fisher folks commodities versus the imported commodities either legally or illegally processed in the Philippines. Uh, youth activities, discrimination, LGBTQIA, hunger, jobs, education, health system, and of course, improvement of general education curriculum. So these issues will be the subject of the next session with Now You Will Teach, who is one of our partners in the Kabilang Kasa 2022 coalition. Ayan. So we also have here questions pala, no? Uh, Kuya Emil. Ayan. So... Number one, bakit hindi ka pwedeng pilitin na bumoto? Kasama ba sa karapatan na bumoto ang karapatan na hindi bumoto? Ayan, uh, very important yung question na yan, Jerty. Uh, kasi katulad sa ko kanina, di ba, uh, yung mga informed choice, yung uh, pagrespeto sa, sa pagboto. Um, in the same way na yun nga, yung pag-participate natin sa election is uh, twofold. Sinabi ko kanina. Uh, isa itong karapatan at it's also an obligation na bumoto. Um, ito ay napapaloob sa constitutional uh, right natin, political right natin uh, na napapaloob sa constitution. Pero 
Um, ang ano natin, ang hindi natin pagboto actually ay hindi naman to mandatory. Uh, so uh, it's a responsibility and, and, and a right but it's not mandatory at hindi naman ito punishable by law. Pero again, katulad ng sinasabi ko, our failure to exercise our right to suffrage, um, it makes us an, an responsible citizen. So uh, yes, you cannot, you can hope not to vote but I hope uh, we also think of uh, what will be um, the consequence of not voting. So yon. Ayan, maraming salamat sa napakagandang response to that question. Aside from voting, what other activities can we participate or contribute to for the conduct of the elections? Napakadali, Jerty. Um, napakadali. Tayo, lahat tayo may Facebook, lahat tayo may Instagram, lahat tayo may Twitter, or karami, karami sa atin may, may, may Twitter or, ano, or, or uh, TikTok, di ba? Una-una, uh, I would enjoin you to really post factual and truthful post lamang na may kinalaman sa election sa ating social media. That's number one. That's the least that we can do. Uh, iwasan natin magpakalat ng fake news. Iwasan natin na mag-share ng mga uh, katatawanan uh, against ibang candidates. Kasi mahirap yun eh, di ba? Let's not uh, diminish the credibility uh, of other people who are actually uh, doing right, doing well. So in, very important yun at the very least. Um, in addition, you can also uh, start uh, talking and convincing um you know, the people uh, around your sphere of influence sa pagboto, di ba? Una-una is to ensure them to vote. And syempre, pangalawa is ensure them that they would vote the right people. So, yun. Yun yung mga sagot ko sa inyo, Jerty. Ayan. Maraming salamat. What are, eto po, um, what are the activities of Comelec that we can join to get more information about the elections? Ayan. So, katuloy ng sinabi ko kanina, Ang Comelec has already uh, started airing e-rallies or electronic rallies. So these are uh, campaign interviews of um, the select, uh, well, uh, presidential, vice presidential, and, uh, uh, and senators and some party list members online. So ito yung isa sa mga Comelec sanctioned activities na pwede natin uh, maging parte tayo. So yan. So kung lahat ako naghahanap tayo ng, ano, ng, ng legitimate and valid na ano, na, na uh, source uh, para sa mga kandidato, ito na yun, guys. Mm, ayan. Ito po. Ayan. We will have an election like no other during a pandemic. Pandemic will continue until May. Do you have a projection of our voter turnout by then? Is there a study being done? He education, healthcare, and poverty is at stake due to unemployment. Hmm. Um... Alam ko maraming mga ano, maraming mga ginagawang uh, projection ng iba-ibang organization. Uh, may mga uh, surveys na ginawa din ang iba-ibang organization like YouthLed. So YouthLed actually conducted a national youth survey with SWS to look at uh, the, the pulse, the pulse ng mga kabataan. So hopefully, yung mga surveys na ito would give us a flavor of um what would be the uh what would be the voters turnout uh, itong ano, itong elections ato. But ako personally I am not aware of what could be the the you know, the the turnout for these coming elections? But I I think na this would really be a, a huge fight between um, some big personalities uh, in the national election. So usually, kasi pag national elections, mataas ano eh ang ang voter turnout compared compared to midterm elections. So yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Ayon, maraming salamat sa response for that question. I mean, uh, interesting yun na parang pagdating na national elections, mas maraming bumaboto, especially pag, you know, um, president, vice president, pati hindi yung laban dyan eh. Okay, mm, sure. so how does the COMELEC ensure the sanctity of our votes for the coming elections po? Ayan, so uh, nabangi ko kayo di ba sa, yung sa powers ng COMELEC na uh, they do, uh, they do uh, what do you call this, uh, stringent measures to ensure na uh, yung vote natin are uh, are really sake uh, taken uh, not taken for granted and uh, uh, held in the best uh, efficient and effective way. In fact, ang um, youth led through uh, attorney Ople, he participated in uh, the demonstration of uh, the Picos machine and uh, the automated machines as well as you know uh, how ballots will be printed. So mas nagitan natin na nagin transparent ang COMELEC ito at nagkakaroon ng mga members from the CSOs to actually look at how they're going to ano to, to do this. So yeah, mas 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 transparent ngayon ng COMELEC. So ako honestly mas ano mas kampante ako ngayon na na pinapangalagaan ng COMELEC ang ating uh, karapatan sa pagboto. Ayan, maraming salamat. Ito may isa pa lang ano interesting question from ULF 
um, Camille Mendoza, in what ways can we go beyond our social circles when discussing politics? How do we ensure that we're not just creating or uh, we're just within our echo chambers? Ayan, na napakaganda ng tanong na yan, uh, Jerty. Um, so right now, katulad na sinabi ko sa inyo, nasa source agon ako. Uh, I'm actually here uh, since the holidays. And then, uh, but prior to this, I was in Manila. Siyempre, uh, sa, sa Facebook at sa social media, ang tendency is that the people that you're friends with would more or less be voting for the same people. Ito yung sinasabi na, no? ito yung sinasabi na, na echo chamber. But I was pleasant, uh, pleasantly surprised, um, both pleasantly surprised and shocked na pag pumunta ka on the ground, it's really different, right? Iba yung flavor ng mga tao pag nasa palengke ka. Iba yung flavor ng mga tao pag nabawa nakasakay ka sa jeep or may mga kausap ka ng mga tricycle drivers. So um, in answer to your question, I would really, really enjoy you to go out and talk to different kinds of people. Go out of your bubble. Go out of uh, your, your, you know, the people that you're usually hanging out with. Um, I would enjoy you to talk to your, uh, aside from your sphere of influence na sinabi kong simulan mo, but I would also start talking to your classmates na hindi mo dati, di ba? I would also start talking to your neighbors na hindi mo na din nakakausap. I-engage mo yung mga jeepney drivers na sa akin mo, so very important yan. Um, noong isang araw, galing ako sa hardware dito sa town namin sa Kasiguran, at tinatanong niya sa akin, uh, Kuya, anong ibaboto mo? So ginawa ko, tinuro ko lang yung kulay ng, ano ko, ng, ng face mask ko. Ah, uh, di ko na sabihin ko anong kulay pero pero sabi ko tinuro ko lang. Sabi niya, "Ah, okay, okay. Sabi niya, bakit? Ako kasi ang ano, ang boboto ko ay ito." Tapos sinuro niya rin yung kulay ng shirt niya. Sabi ko, "Oh, bakit? Bakit yun yung boboto mo?" Sabi niya, "Ah, kasi ano, um dito, uh, ano daw, maiging maganda daw yung bukas, uh, maiging babangon daw uli." So, yun yung mga reasons niya. So, nag-usap kami, nag-usap kami hanggang sa ang tagal namin nag-aantay. Ako, tinatawagan na ako ng mama ko. Kasi nanta yung semento na gamitin niya sa bahay. Pero ang ganda kasi na I'm able to engage um, you know, people na hindi talaga ako, hindi ko talaga nakakausap regularly. So in the same way, you can also do the same. Um, if you feel strongly about uh, your principles, not just your candidates, ha, if you feel strongly about your principles, then talk to people about it. Um, ako, I'm very vocal about uh, who I'm going to vote. Not because of that person, but because I know that uh, that person will be my chance for a better future for our country. So, katulad na sinasabi ko pa ulit-ulit, sinasalamin ng mga ibaboto natin yung aspirations and values natin. So, we should be proud of our values. We should be proud of our principles. So, ayun. Mm -hmm. And maraming salamat yun, Kuya Emil. No? To add, no? Kasi ako, like, parang I have this habit din to, like, talk to people whenever I go outside. Ganun. And, like, ang isa sa mga natututunan ko when you engage other people is to, you know, like, parang you get to see their reality, eh, na parang I believe na, you know, the people that they vote for that they will vote for is a reflection of their reality na parang hindi lang siya basta dahil sa, you know, I mean, parang kapag we have, like, you know, um, we may have different values or something, but I believe naman na parang ayun nga, everyone just wants to have a better Philippines. And like, you know, we, if we really feel strongly about these values, katuloy nga ni, ano ni Kuya Emil, di ba, na we, we're, uh, we're going to be vocal about it and like engage to other people and understand then where they're coming from and why they, ano, parang hindi siya antagonizing in a way, ganun. parang let's not antagonize people with their beliefs and their realities. So, ayun. So, eto po. Uh, maraming salamat doon na, Kuya Emil. Ayan, so meron pang isang tanong. Vote buying is wrong. Fake news is real. People do not vote for who they want to because they accept money. How do we ensure that these people engaged in illegal acts so, such as online and face-to-face -face vote buying are not tolerated soon or face legal action? Okay, well, simple lang yan. <laughs> uh, Katulad sila yung kanina, yung andyan yung commission and elections. Um, if, we, uh, if we could gather evidence and actually submit this uh, to the commission and elections, that's something that they could do. Um, uh, but syempre, babalikan ko lang yung pinakasimple natin gagawin. Diba? Huwag na tayo guys mag-take part sa, ano, sa, sa vote buying na to. Diba? Isipin mo, uh, bibigyan ka ng, ano, ng, ng uh, five, uh, 500 pesos. Diba? 500 pesos para iboto mo ang isang tao. At, at, at yung person na yun would be there uh, in the position for uh, for uh, six years. So, i-divide natin na. 500 pesos divided by six. So, ibig sabihin nyo, ang, ang halaga ng, ng, ano mo, ng, ng taon mo is 83 pesos lang. Diba? Ganoon na baka baba ang pagtingin mo at pag-value mo sa sarili mo. So, guys, iwasan natin guys yung yung wag na natin i-tolerate yung ano yung yung vote bike na yan um i know na ang hindi madaling sabihin pero 
pag kumakalamang sikmura, um, uh, what we call this, um, mga pita, kakapit tayo sa amount na to. Pero isipin na natin yung future natin na kung maayos ang napinunong na ilok-lok natin, mas maayos sa programa ang may bibigay sa atin um, in the long run. So yun, very important yun. Ayan, maraming salam siya, Kuya Emil. Kung ano lang din, no? Like, Um, syempre, nakita ko rin sa response ng ibang mga participants natin kanina that they will vote for integrity, that they will vote for the people. Na parang ang, ang pagboto natin ay hindi lang dahil sa eh, gusto lang natin bumoto, ganun. Na parang nakikita natin na parang yung pagboto natin ay, ay makaka-affect sa maraming tao, ganun, sa buong Pilipinas actually. Kaya parang hindi lang siya basta-basta like boboto lang tayo dahil lang gusto natin yung kandidato. Like, Diba? Parang boboto tayo para syempre, matul- parang it's a way of helping na lang the, the other people who are actually were actually, you know, um marginalized, ganun, underrepresented, ganun. So, ayun, kaya talaga dapat um magiging ano tayo, maging mapanuri pagdating sa mga taong tumatakbo ngayon. And syempre, maging ano rin tayo, um, yun nga, bumoto, bumoto ng wisely, sabi nga in English, yes. di ba? Let's vote wisely. Ayan. Uh, so, uh, balikan ko lang yung ano, balikan ko lang yung sinabi ni, ano, ni Sir uh, Reg Andal, uh, mm-hmm. especially he highlighted this, uh, especially last Tuesday para sa mga scholars. Sabi niya, Um, yes, sabi ng isang uh, member kayo, di ba, I'm voting for the people. Pero sabi ni Sir Raj Andal na we have a moral and social contract to actually vote for the marginalized sector. I, uh, mm-hmm. Bumoto tayo para sa mga walang boses. Kaya very important guys yung pagboto natin. Ayun. Ayan, maraming salamat. Napaka-insightful nga yun, Kuya Emil. Ayan, so thank you so much and congratulations ulit kay Denise Tanalas na nanalo po sa Q&A natin today with ano, Kuya Emil. So before we formally close our session for today, may I invite everyone to enter the evaluation form. The link is in our Zoom chat so that we can send the certificate of participation to your registered email address. As we move closer to the 2022 Philippine presidential elections, the role of the youth and their participation in democratic and civic activities has never been more important. Youth-led has developed a three-point civic and electoral program that allows for youth participation in the electoral cycle leading to the development of a youth agenda. This program consists of a free election or voters registration and voters education campaigns, election or election day monitoring, Um, and, and voters turnout campaigns and post-election, which consists of candidate accountability and development of a youth agenda program. Sa ngayon ng aming, sorry, sa, sa ngayon ng aming focus ay ang voters education at agenda building. Patuloy na pagbibigay impormasyon sa mga kabataan sa kahalagahan ng pagboboto, uh, pagsasaliksik sa mga issue na nakaka-apekto, lang, lalat higit sa kabataan upang ihatid at gawing election issue para dal Uh, para dalhin bilang program of government sa mga kandidato, pagbibigay kaalaman kung paano nagtatrabaho ang iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno, kaya kritikal ang pagpili ng tamang leader para sa tamang posisyon. Magkakaroon din po kami ng elector, uh, election day monitoring initiative sa mga regional clusters na kasalukuyan namin binubuo, lalo't higit sa mga vote-rich provinces and key cities. We hope that you can join us and be part of our Kabilang Kasa 2022 Coalition. Nasa ating Zoom chat ng link. Ngayon na nasagot na natin ang ating papel, alamin naman natin ang ating ambag sa video na ito ng at, aming coalition partner na participate. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga pinakamakapangyarihang tao sa Pilipinas? Si Pangulong Duterte at mga politiko, mga artista at influencers, mga pari at iyong malalapit kay Lord, si Darna and Friends. Ang tamang sagot, none of the above. Ikaw ang pinakamakapangyarihang tao sa bansa. Paano masabi? Ayon nga sa Konstitusyon, Sovereignty resides in the people, and all government authority emanates from them. Wow! Big word! Ibig sabihin, galing sa taong bayan ang kapangyarihan ng gobyerno at ng mga politiko. Dahil ikaw ang bumoto para maluklok sila sa pwesto. Ikaw ang nagbayad ng buwis para may panggasto sa mga proyekto ng pamahalaan. At ikaw rin ang may kapangyarihang alisin sila sa pwesto. Galing ha? 
เอตุป้า The prime duty of the government is to serve and protect the people. Ibig sabihin, nandiyan ang gobyerno para pagsilbihan at protektahan ka. Kulang pa rin? O eto? Civilian authority is at all times supreme over the military. Ibig sabihin, mas makapangyarihan ka kaysa sa militar o sino mang may armas. Kaya nga public servant ang tawag sa mga politiko, lingkod bayan. Dapat paglingkuran nila ang taong bayan. Tatandaan natin, kaya nga tayo may gobyerno, kaya nga tayo may uh, demokrasya ngayon, dahil binigay natin ang kapangyarihan na yan dito sa mga elected officials para uh, patakbuhin nila ang ating gobyerno. Pero aminin mo, minsan baliktad ang nangyayari. Iyong mga lingkod bayan pa ang nagahari at nananamantala sa bayan. Mga pulis at sundalo pa ang nananakit sa mamamayan. Dahil akala niya may armas siya, dahil akala niya may kapangyarihan siya, dahil akala niya mayroon siyang kayamanan, above the law na siya. Pagka ganyan ang nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng uh, pangaabuso, nagkakaroon ng mal- maling kultura, at kailangan po ay baguhin po natin yan. Ang gobyerno ay nandyan para pagsilbihan ng taong bayan. Ngayon, alam mo na. Kailangan mong protektahan ang kapangyarihan mo bilang mamamayan. Gamitin mo ang kapangyarihang magsalita, bumoto at makiisa sa kapwa Pilipino. At ipaalam mo sa mga naghahari-hari ang lingkod bayan kung sino ang tunay na makapangyarihan. Alamin kung ano ang mga kasalukuyang ginagawa ng Participate. Bumisita lamang sa inclusivedemocracy.ph at i-follow ang aming social media accounts. Ayan, so before we end our session today, let's turn on our cameras to take a group photo. Uh, Dirty, you may want ano, to uh, remove muna yung share screen para nakagallery lahat. Okay, sige. Taglit lang ha, may inaayos lang sa technical difficult Ayan, so pakibuksan na lang po ang ating mga camera para sa ating group photo. Ayan, pinapromote lang po namin na maging panelist po yung iba para po makasama po lahat sa group photo. Pasensya na po sa paghihintay. Marami sa inyo naman.
Okay, sige, game. Ngiti na lang po tayo. Okay, sige. One, two. Ayan, check lang natin, ha? Ayan, next page naman po. Sige, ayan. Isa pa, isa pang pag-ngipi. Okay. One, two. Ayan, saglit lang. Check natin. Ayan, isa pa, isa pa. Isa na lang, guys. Okay? Konting, itis, uh, konting tiis lang sa ating um, facial muscles. Ayan, sige. Ngiti pa, okay? One, two. Ayan, sagli, check natin. Ayan, muli, muli maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pakikibahagi. Tandaan, ang pakikilahok ng kabataan ay mahalaga. Tayo ang tagapagmana ng bukas. Kaya tungkulin natin na huwag iasa sa mga mas nakatatanda sa atin ang mamanahing bukas. Tulad ngayong eleksyon, bukod sa pagsisiguro na makaboto sa araw ng eleksyon, maaaring mag-volunteer ang ating mga kababayan bilang election monitor sa mga sumusunod na organisasyon. NAMFREL para sa Election Observation at Random Manual Audit, Simbahang Lingkod ng Bayan at TPCRV para sa Election Day Assistance sa mga botante at pag-retrieve ng election, election returns para sa Quick Count, Rappler at Philippine Star para sa Hashtag Pack First o pag-uulit ng nagpapakalat ng fake news, at Youth-Led, Youth Both Philippines at Kabilang Kasa 2022 Coalition para sa Election Day Monitoring at the Polling Prison. So muli, maraming salamat sa lahat ng mga dumalo sa ating webinar today. Ito po si Jerty na nagpapaalala, may bilang ang boto mo.